The ladies and we're excited to bring you another edition of the TLC, a show that prioritizes women in sport. And you know what? September is Heritage Month, Libs, and it's a time to be proudly South African, as we always like to do here on a TLC. This is a time that we, ref we reflect on how far we've come as a country, and we must salute all the women in sport who represented us so well on the international stage. Wheelchair tennis sensation Mariska Fenta is our guest today. She's our game changer. The tennis star is set to take the modeling world by storm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. So she's breaking uh, the glass ceiling when it comes to modeling in South Africa. And she chats to us about that and so much more. My name is Velen Kirtley, and thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome to join in the conversation on social media, on Twitter. We're at sports at SABC, at Lebo Mutsuere, at Velen Kirtley. Just use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. We're also on Facebook as SABC Sports, and just use our hashtag, the ladies club. And of course, our focus, Hompienu, is a woman who have overcome adversity to win. Now, adversity always presents a, a certain kind of challenge which becomes a barrier to achieving greatness. However, difficulties and misfortunes don't have to keep you from achieving your intended goals. And our guest, Mariska, is a wonderful, a great and awesome and amazing testament to the fact that a disability does really nothing. It, it doesn't dictate the way your path takes to life. Uh, speaking about adversity and yes. overcoming adversity, that's something that our national women's team are going to have to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Because the South African senior women's football national team, Banyana Banyana, they've begun their Kasafa Women's Championship title defense in Port Elizabeth. Banyana are in Group A against Madagascar, mm. Malawi, and Botswana. Coach Desiree Ellis is using the tournament to prepare for the crucial Africa Women Cup of Nations, which gets uh, underway in November. Yeah, good luck to the ladies. But as per tradition, when I'm Larnala, the ladies' club, uh, we get underway with an inspiring coach. To work on mental toughness, which is an important factor for success in endurance sport. A strong mind and character is the making of a true athlete. Even the seemingly small things matter if you want to be successful. Our command to our British wheelchair tennis player, Jordan Wiley. Well, age 14, Jordan became Britain's youngest ever national women singles champion in wheelchair tennis. She has osteogenesis imperfecta, as does her father Keith, who mm. was also a Paralympian and won a bronze medal in 1984 in New York. Uh, Jordan herself was awarded the MBE in the 2015 Queen's Birthday Honours List. That's impressive. <laughs> Stay tuned. Thanks so much for staying with the Ladies Club. Please join us on social media, Facebook and Twitter uh, with our hashtag, hashtag the Ladies Club. We'd love to hear what you have to say about today's program mm. and anything else that may be on your mind. And talking about anything else, let's look at the news. Kasta Semenya, or Utsu completing a 2018 fight on the track with an undefeated 800 meter record of three years intact and unchallenged after winning the IAAF Continental Cup title, Kutokwanako Ostrava. Ah, you know, there is nothing that Kesta cannot do. No. So many won the 800 meter race from gun to tape, going through the bell in 55.93 seconds, nearly a second ahead of her nearest rival. She's been a star athlete on the IAAF's premier track and field meetings. And after that, and representing the Africa team at mm. those continental championships, she also set a new national record in the 400 yes. meters, although she wasn't able to get the double gold. Oh, wow, she's been really in great form this year. And talking from one amazing athlete to another, a game changer is the fearless Mariska Fender who pursued success and defied all odds despite her disability vision. Yeah, last year she won the women's singles and doubles title at the Soweto Open and won the women's singles title at the Lithuanian Open. Good morning and welcome to the Ladies Club, Mariska. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. 
It's really great to have you in studio. And a lot of people uh, obviously probably will be asking themselves, how and when did you decide to embark on sport? Before we talk about the modeling career, that, we've, <laughs> that is quite so obvious why you would get into that. Um, well, I've always loved sport and my family is really good at sport. Um, so after my accident, uh, we came upon wheelchair tennis. I was in a small town, Armula in Pumalanga. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have team sports like wheelchair basketball or rugby. Um, so yeah, I started playing tennis and I never stopped ever since. Can you tell us a little bit about your accident? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was involved in a car accident in 2004. I was only eight years old sure. and a car just crashed right into us. So it was a head on head collusion. Um, also in the accident, I lost my father and oldest brother and sure. I broke my back and was left paralyzed. So yeah, it was a big accident. Um, lots of lives were lost. Yeah. And, but yeah, here we are. <laughs> sure. well, well, and, and as you get out of that accident, um, how difficult was it for you as a child, uh, besides getting over the loss of your father and brother, to overcome a loss of a life now that was a, an able-bodied person to, a dis, to, to now having a disability. Yeah, so I think because I was that young, it yeah. didn't really bother me that much, but the older I got, the harder it got really? to deal with and to deal with, oh, guys, don't look at you anymore. You're not mm. beautiful. You don't have those beautiful legs. You're in a wheelchair. Mm. People pity you. So uh, it w it's really hard. It's a tough life. And... That's why through my sport and through my modeling, I want to change that stereotype that gets put on women and people in wheelchairs by the society. Sure. Uh, you mentioned that you uh, signed a, a modeling contract yes. uh, quite recently with Ice Models, and they were the only people brave enough to take on somebody in a wheelchair. Yeah, they were the only agency in South Africa willing to take on a model in oh. a wheelchair. Oh. And uh, it's so big globally. I mean, it is. wheelchair models are on Milan Fashion Week, yeah. New York Fashion Week. So it's about time that South Africa steps up to the plate and starts showcasing us as beautiful women. And what kind of stereotypes are you hoping to break within yes. modeling and also in, in sport as a wheelchair tennis player? I think the biggest stereotype people presume that people in wheelchairs can't do anything and that our wheelchair holds us back in life. But the wheelchair is just helping us mm. to live out our dreams. And that's the stereotype I want to break that the wheelchair is not me. Yes. I'm still me. Yes. I'm beautiful. I can be good at sport. I can do what I want to, anything I want to. And the wheelchair just helps me to get there. Um, so that's the stereotype I want to break and to say that no matter what your situation, mm. you can achieve anything. Sure. Uh, most people would look at your situation and the first thing that would come to their mind is, Shame. Mm. And I look exactly. at you and that is not yeah. the word that comes to my mind. You yeah. are confident. Yeah. You are self-assured. Where do you get that from? Oh, I think I was blessed with a big, strong personality. Um, but I don't know. I just like to show people that no matter what your situation, you mm. can still be brave. You can still go on with life. And Instead of thinking of everything I can't do, I think of everything I can, can do. Yeah. And uh, if anyone puts limitations on me, I take it as a challenge. And I was like, I'm going to overcome that and I'm going to show you I can do it. Now, talking about what you can do and what you've been <laughs> able to do is play tennis. Yes. So uh, from a young age, tell us when did you start? Why, why, why did you decide on wheelchair tennis? Uh, I'm pretty sure you went through a lot of uh, mental preparation as to what can I do now that I'm in a wheelchair, what can I take as a sporting code that, would, uh, that I could be really good at? So why tennis? So like I mentioned, I was in a small town mm. and um, they showed me wheelchair tennis and I started playing and I loved it. And the coach looked at me and said that you're still going to be great one day. And that's why I never stopped. I just fell in love with the game and it was the only sport available for me to do in a small town. So I just started playing it because it's something you can play with your school's coaches, with your, your school friends. I also played for my able-bodied school in the third team. So wow. I played against able-bodied kids uh, while I was in high school. So yes, that's why I fell in love with tennis. And you also managed to reach uh, the top of the girls' world rankings in 2013. Yes. Do you, I mean, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, 
what what that did for you and for your confidence and also yeah. to show you that you know you're on the right track yeah uh, the minute i achieved the number one ranking junior girl in the world i was like wow okay wow. maybe maybe this can be a career <laughs> maybe i can achieve some more greater heights and that's when i had to decide after school if i'm going to take tennis or if i'm going to study um, so I decided to take on tennis and to see where it's going to take me. And what did that uh, junior number one world ranking do for you mentally? I mean, mentally it gave me a boost. It was like, yes, you can do it and you are good and you can achieve so much more. So it gave me much confidence and it's something I'm really proud of telling people what I achieved. <laughs> you decided to take on tennis instead of going to study at university but you never knew that AXA were going to pull out of their wheelchair tennis sponsorship and unfortunately leave you here in the South African context with very little playing platforms which is what we currently are in at the moment which has seen your world rankings really go down because you haven't had the mm. tournaments to play and to get those world rankings up. Yeah. Do you regret the decision that you chose to, to choose tennis? I don't regret it because I did my beauty school, I've done with that and I'm studying now BCom Marketing through UNISA. Um, so I've got many things going on um, while I'm doing a full-time career in tennis. But that is a problem with us losing our sponsorships. It's something we all have to deal with and cope with mm. and if you don't have a background in studying or any grading, it's going to be hard to find a career and a sustainable life after tennis is taken away. And who would you say uh, inspires you in the wheelchair tennis fraternity to keep going? Um, I would say Lucy Shuka. She's from Great Britain and mm -hmm. she's in the top 10. Um, the reason I choose her is because she is one of the few girls on tour who are also a fully paraplegic lady where you know KG Monjani is a amputee mm. um, so there's so many of them and Lucy shows me that even though you don't have stomach muscles you don't have balance you don't have all these things you can still be top 10 in the world so I look up to her and I see how hard she works and I know that I can do that too. Mm. Khotatso has had an amazing year this year yeah. Yeah. and she's reached a career high of number five in, in the, the world. world. Yeah. I mean, how much do you draw from, from, from KG and the fact that she is South African and you've seen how the South African uh, community, especially the ladies in South Africa, have chosen to get behind her and mm. sponsor her yeah. and that's a place that you're at and you kind of need that leading light to see that it's possible for me, I can still do this. Yeah, I mean, KG is a big mentor and someone I've always looked up to, even since I started my tennis career. Um, she's always been the number one, always been top 10. So to see her being kind of the lead, um, it gives me empowering of like, you can do this even mm. in South Africa. And she gets coached by my coach as well. So we're always in each other's space mm. and the business. So we learn a lot from each other. And it's, yeah, it's a privilege to train with her and to play with her. So there's still so much to dig from you, Mariska, when we come back from the short break. Because I also want to find out what inspires you on a day-to-day -day basis. And also, I think it's also important to talk about the different types of disabilities for someone that perhaps wants to play wheelchair tennis and they don't quite understand the different types of disabilities. But all of that when we come back from the short break. Welcome back, you're watching The Ladies Club. Thanks so much for staying with us. It's that time of the show, before we continue our conversation with today's game changer, Mariska Fenter, that we zoom in on a lady who has blazed the trail in the sports world. And our superstar today is another paraplegic, but not in the sport of tennis. It's Sandra Kumalo. Absolutely. She is one of uh, South Africa's top rowers and has completed at the 2012 Paralympic Games and back as well in 2005, in fact. Sandra's life changed after she was injured in a car accident. The accident 
damage to her spinal cord and left her lower body paralyzed. Mm, she quickly found her new strength though and took up swimming to improve her upper body strength and she went on to join the Durban Rowing Club and was taken to the training camp for the national team and it was there that uh, the point of her career really take, took a, a shift in her life. Well, she's since competed at three World Rowing Championships and was at the 2016 Paralympics in Brazil. Her star continues to shine as she remains a true inspiration. And I think that this is a nice time to speak about uh, those differences in yeah. the disability. So Sandra is like our game changer today. She is a paraplegic. Mm -hmm. But just explain to us, you, when you, you mentioned KG, you mentioned Lucy yeah. Shuka being a, a paraplegic. Just explain the differences and yeah. the vast amount of disabilities that you can find within women's singles mm. tennis? Well, basically anything that makes you not able to play able-bodied tennis qualifies you to play wheelchair tennis. Um, so you can have a toe that's off. <laughs> we always joke by saying <laughs> yeah, it's that I, minor. You, you, you're yeah. making the joke, yeah. Um, but we have a classification, um, people that classify you, but no matter what your disability, you sit in a wheelchair and you play wheelchair tennis. So even there's so many players on tour that after they play their match, they get up and walk because they can walk. Maybe they have a heart disease or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but everyone needs to sit on a wheelchair. And there's a big rule in wheelchair tennis that your bottom needs to touch the wheelchair at all times. Mm. Because people like KG or people that can walk, can stand up and reach for high yeah, balls. Yeah. So to prevent them from doing that, there's a rule that your bottom needs to be on the surface of your wheelchair at all times. Wow. What has been the most difficult moments of your career? <sighs> most difficult moments, that's a tough one. Um, I think there's not really difficult moments. I think the most difficult part for, I think, an athlete in South Africa is to be able to get funds to compete at international level. And for us to qualify for big events, to qualify for the Paralympics, we need to compete at international events to have that exposure. Um, so getting funds, getting people to back you up and mm. believe in your dream, I think that would be the most difficult part in my career. Mm. Uh, it is possible though, we saw KG has got a wonderful sponsorship which yeah. is going to ensure that she's able to compete at yeah. different international competitions. So is that something that you're looking at too, getting sponsors yes. on board? Yes, I mean I'm trying everything I've got. I think every business knows my name by now in <laughs> South Africa. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to get my name out there, trying to get my profile, trying to get someone to believe in my dream and to help me to achieve it. What That's, is that dream? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, my dream is to qualify for the Paralympics and to actually go to Tokyo to compete at a big event and a big level. And where are you ranked at the moment? Where are you in terms of uh, your ranking in South Africa globally? In South Africa, I'm number two, so I'm just underneath KG. Mm -hmm. And uh, globally, I'm 67th now, mm -hmm. but my best career singles ranking was 27th in the world and 22 in doubles. Other than tennis and modeling, what, who is Mariska? Mm. I th it, that's a hard question because I feel like everything I do is kind of me. I'm so privileged in my life to do things that are me and that I enjoy. Yeah. So I don't get put into a job that I don't really like. Everything I do is who I am and I love to present people with beauty and to tell them they are beautiful and mm. that they can do anything and to be sport athletes. Um, so that is who I am. And how important is family support in your career? Big. I mean, I think if you have a good home base back home, there's no way that if you're on tour away from everyone that you will feel sad and homesick because you've got this good home base. Um, so my family and friends are amazing and they've always supported me in my career and yeah, it's definitely an important thing to have. Mm. Tell us a little bit a little bit about your about your mom. She must be an incredibly strong woman to have lost yeah. her husband and to have a daughter that mm. uh, now is is in a wheelchair from yeah. the age of eight. I mean, I don't know how she does it. I don't mm. know where she draws the strength from, um, but she's definitely lost so much in her life, and she still keeps going, keeps me motivated to like do everything by myself. That I am capable of doing anything. So yeah, she's a strong woman. And what do you do? to keep yourself motivated that we don't know of. Yeah. What do you do? Well, I heard, I read this quote once that 
no one can be 100% motivated every day, all day, but you have to be disciplined. Um, so I strive to be disciplined, but to motivate me in those days that you don't feel the motivation, I'll say is my dreams. I'm a big dreamer and I dream big. Yeah. And uh, that is what motivates me because I don't just want to dream, I want to make it reality. Sure. So one of the dreams is Tokyo 2020. Yeah. Another dream is competing on the international circuit consistently so that you can get to Tokyo 2020. Yeah. What are some of the other big dreams? Other big dreams is um, next year I'm going to compete in Miss Wheelchair World. Wow. Um, so that is a big dream um, on the horizon. So I'm busy preparing for that route. And yeah, I can't wait to see what's going to happen. And what does it take to prepare to be taking part in the Miss Wheelchair World? Well, the application starts in the process and then hopefully they'll accept you. And if you get accepted, you can go to the pageant in Poland. Um, I know, what are some of the criteria? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the criteria are just be in a wheelchair and have a message and yeah, just go and do it. Now I'm excited. <laughs> wow. So, you know, we've had Rolene Strauss, yeah. we've had Demi Lee Peters now. <laughs> you're, you're, you never know. <laughs> hey, I see it, I see it, I see it. Why is it important for you to embrace being a woman while also being very, very competitive on the tennis court. And how do yeah. you actually balance those two things? Because we look at you and you look so sweet and yeah. innocent. Mm. And mm. You, when you get out onto the court, you have got that fire of competitiveness in your eyes. How do yeah. you balance those two things? Yeah, I think it's a big stereotype also put on women in sport mm. that we can't be feminine, we can't be beauty, that we're sport. Mm. Um, so, I don't know. I think just... As I go onto the tennis court, I have this feeling and this passion and this fire to win. And that's exactly how I feel with my dreams, with achieving them. But also, I love being a woman and feminine, and you can be both. You can do anything that you want to. Yeah. And how do you relax? What is your, what is your downtime <laughs> go-to thing to do? So, there's not much time for that. So when I do relax, I just like laying around, Watching some movies, what having some girl time. Yes. Music. What do you what do you listen to? What do you watch? I like the dramas, the romantic dramas. You're romantic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have found a friend here. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So you and I will do that all yes. day. Anytime. All day. <laughs> yeah. So I love doing that, spending time with family, being outdoors in the nature. Yeah. <clears throat> If you could uh, leave our viewers with, with one message, mm -hmm. what would it be? Um, one thing I'm going on and that I want to kind of embrace as something I say to people is keep shining. Yeah. So no matter what you do, no matter what is happening to you, no matter your situation, that just keep shining. There's so many days you wake up and you don't want to shine, but sure. just keep shining. Well, yeah. Mariska, thank you so much for coming on to the Ladies Club and sharing your journey. And looking forward to that crown coming back to the studio. Please now, <laughs> don't forget us. Thank you so much. That's been our game changer today, Mariska Fenter, South Africa's second-ranked women's wheelchair tennis player and also a model that, hey, maybe in the not-too-distant future is uh -huh. going to represent South Africa at the world pageant for those models in wheelchairs. Remember, until we meet again, that greatness is never given, it's always earned. Bye-bye. <laughs>